Well, if I could make a kazoo noise with a comb and a piece of wax paper, you would be treated to the delightful dulcet tones of that. But instead, because I can't, you just get to listen to a review of Mechazoo from the Good Mood Creators, developed on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for around 20 of your local currency, depending on where you live and how much your government hates you. Uh, we also, uh, yeah, and what is it? Mechazoo is a 2D platformer set in a vibrant 3D world with fast-flowing gameplay and a cast of genetically diverse mechanized animals. Um, they're also delicious, but they won't tell you that here. So let, let's oh, kick off. Oh, and they did send us keys. They did. Oh, they send did us send keys. us. They did. They did send us keys. This was, yeah. The the my prompt isn't there. Thanks a lot, producer. Sorry. I guess <laughs> I, I actually I guess that one's on me. Shut up, Jordan. You suck. Um, but uh, chair acquisition. One chair means that it's trash. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. We also got our categories of doom. Makes it working. Shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let us kick this off. Ring in the new year with some awkward kazoo noises and a kangaroo that keeps falling into pits. Ben! Yes, ma'am. Make kazoo make with the working. Well, over here on the box of business, the running the Humbuntu 1604 LTS with an 8150 powered by a 980 displayed at the UHDs. It ran. It ran good. But don't let that uh, give you pause for one second to think that everything's all right over here in Vinland, because it's not. Out of the box, this game does not support UHD. Mm -mm. You can't have your Persuado 4K. It's just not going to have it. I think it does 1440. At the most. Uh, and if, when you're trying to close the game, you basically have to tell this game three separate fucking times that you want to know. But then again, it's Unity. So Vulcan Nerve Pinch or Alt F4 takes it out. Uh, V-Sync enabled, disabled, whatever, when you're in game. Okay, it's kind of weird. When, when you're actually playing game actual, it's just going to lock it at 60. You can't do shit about that. But during the loading screens, it'll go up to 300 and something like that. So... I got to kind of give it, you know, three chairs. I mean, it does more than just make with working. It does better than that, but there is room for improvement. Hey, what's this? A Unity game in 2016 that doesn't have the scream of nope when you start it up? Bonus soda! Uh, to further elaborate on Ben's point about having to quit three times, yes, you have to quit the level. You have to quit the level select, and then you can <laughs> quit the game, which is really, really stupid. Which is why I just I do the same thing. It's like quit. No, I'm back at the level select. Yeah, I'll death or fuck that. Um, but beyond that, uh, yeah, there's no UHD support. I don't usually play Unity games in UHD anymore, just because that engine cannot handle the higher resolutions. And beyond that, on Fedora 24 with the i7 6700K and the GTX 980, it all worked res res relatively well. That's relatively a word. Well. It is now four <laughs> chairs. Yeah, over here on Ubuntu Mate with the FX8370 E and the uh, GeForce GTX 1080, it ran well enough. It, uh, like Ben already mentioned, it's locked at 60 in gameplay proper. But it didn't really dip, at least not to any noticeable degree for me. So, uh, and considering, like, again, Jordan mentioned, it doesn't have the Unity screen of Nope, which is sad that I am currently in 2017 and I still have to, you know, give it bonus points for not having that. It's it's really sad. But hey, it gets four chairs for Mixed With the Working. It doesn't get bonus points for not having a screen of Nope. It just doesn't lose any. So yeah, yeah that's three <laughs> chairs for mix with the working. I'm next to Shiny and Sounds, Ben. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's be honest. I, I I never really expect much when a developer sends over keys. They send over keys. They were really polite. There was some snafu between. I think mm -hmm. our original keys came from like PR people, yeah. not directly. And then we got back in touch with the developers, and they like hooked us up. We good on them. When you when I load something up and this is given to us, is like, I don't expect much, but I genuinely surprised i mean this game is fucking gorgeous uh, the, the the detail on the levels alone you, you get all the chairs for that i mean it's been a lot of love a lot of love went into this business however you know just like the backgrounds and you know the character animations and all that there's so much shit going on and it's done well and it's reasonably performing i mean on, with a 980, it always holds 60. However, sometimes that awesomeness can cause you to lose track of your fuck-mothering character, which does happen in this game. 
The only, the only thing, I, it's not really a ding, but it's something I notice uh, when you shoot out of a cannon and it's loading a new area, be it uh, your aardvark or whatever the hell it is, and your kangaroo or your frog, uh, this loading screen, they all, they all look like they, they've slammed like a DMT smoothie, man. I mean, they are spaced the fuck out. It's, like, it's kind of amusing. The soundtrack, uh, all I, I can say is it definitely has a very distinct, like, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 vibe to it. And that's a good thing. I don't get to do this often for a Unity joint, but for chairs. Yeah, honestly, the soundtrack is one of the big things that stand out. It's really funky. I found myself jamming out with it a couple times while suffering through. Well, we'll get to the gameplay in a little bit later. <laughs> Um, the art style is very well done. All the characters are uniquely designed. The enemies can get a bit repetitive at times because it's always the same couple of things. But beyond that, it's all it's all very well done. Every, everything looks distinct. Everyone has their own unique little character. Um, there, there's definitely some Unity-isms present that can't really be helped given that it's developed on a Unity engine game. And uh, honestly, you can sort of hand wave it away with the art style uh i really i really like the character designs i like the backgrounds because they're very elaborate and well designed the level design is also really really cool with lots of hidden bits and stuff you really only see on the second time around which is again really good it shows that they've uh they've really taken a page out of the rayman sonic the hedgehog style of level design giving you multiple branching paths it's pretty cool i'll have to give that three cheers for shining the sounds color me impressed yeah, I honestly can't give it four chairs because at one point it j did. Uh, <clears throat> let's try that again. It did genuinely cause me to get a wee bit motion sick. Uh, the camera flails around a little too much to give those panoramic shots of the action. But when you're stuck in a ditch, sort of, and actively trying to wall jump with a kangaroo, quote unquote, skin. And the camera keeps flailing left and right. Yeah, that's just more than a little bit barf-inducing. Uh, other than that, it does look very, very good. And the aforementioned panoramic shots do add to the experience. The soundtrack, well, Ben and Jordan already drooled all over that. And it fits. I know that kind of sounds like a cop-out answer. But between saying that and saying that there's, it's just really nothing to write home about. Eh, but at least didn't get muted. Eh. Potato, potato, as the case may be. So, three chairs. Uh, when Pedro uh, gets motion sickness from, you know, watching games that move too fast and he produces vomit, he also produces split pea soup. The pea soup <laughs> to Pedro. Um, <laughs> that terrible joke brought to you by the Patreons at linuxgamecast.com. Uh, that is that is three chairs for Shining Sense that next is control. Then. That's something you want to sit back, relax, and play with a controller as the game clearly tells you that Genesis to hit that A button. Well, that A button might as well be your left control bumper, or it could be the Y button or the right trigger stick, because this is old school Unity built-in controller, pray and spray. The only options you have are to invert some of the controls. I think it has like three different uh. control schemes. This is something I haven't seen since like 2014. Why do they do this? Why is it? Because they didn't use SDL2. And are they aware of this issue? Absolutely. Have they made any plans to fix it? Absolutely. Uh, that's definitely a thing. They need to sort that shit. All right. The controls are hard locked and most of your buttons, every single one of your buttons, you know, on my X clone controller have you know, there'll be two different keys that'll do the exact same bullshit, and it's kind of irritating, and trust me, the default layout for this, even with the mapped ones that they have available in-game, which you can't, you know, pick and choose the ones like a regular sane person would want to do, they're, they're all crackhead schemas, not a huge fan of that. But outside of that, they do work, they do move, and you can technically play the game, but... It's 2016, walking into 2017. I don't need you to tell me what buttons I can use. So for that, you're going to get two. Yeah, so I, I had this conversation both with Ben and Pedro separately, and it more or less resulted in the same thing, where I, I, I asked them, hey, the controls seem kind of fucked to you. And oh, in both yeah. cases, the reaction is, oh my god, yes, I thought I was just stupid. So... 
that should that should uh, raise a couple red flags here. Like Ven said, uh, the control scheme is a bit whacked. A and B need to do different things. So A, B do the same thing. Uh, or it's A, B, and the left bumper. Or no, uh, yeah, right bumper do the same thing. Uh, uh, y, X, and the right trigger do the same thing. And it's completely asinine. The they they need to avoid the spray and pray. And yeah, the movement is super floaty. Um, all three of us cannot figure out how to make that stupid armadillo do what we want it to. <laughs> and I think there's been quite a number of attempts between the three of us. So that too is not a good sign. Uh, they give you different modes of movement for all the various uh, characters, and some are a lot better than others, and some are just really really awful. Kangaroo. Blah! Excuse me. <laughs> um. But yeah, um, I mean, the, the controls do work, but there's definitely issues with them. Hopefully, if they if they don't just abandon this like so many other Unity games, they can maybe fix that, maybe make some tighter controls, maybe give some prompts at the beginning of the game that say, explain how the character's movement works instead of leaving us to figure it out and play all around like freaking idiots. So I got to give it two chairs. Yeah, no, uh, I know it's kind of gauche on the internet nowadays you know for internet assholes like us who like to you know provide their opinions on certain video games uh, some will go as far as to say they're video game critics i'm not going to i know better than that but uh yeah no there's definitely a noticeable delay when you hit the uh action button the a button um and the game doesn't really do anything but then again it doesn't really punish you too hard for it either uh all the levels are really really short so there's usually more than one way to get to certain places but there's really absolutely no incentive to do that either because all you're getting is one of those infuriating blue gems that you can only use to uh buy visual things so they yeah no um I'm not going to be too harsh on the game for the floating controls yet, but not letting me rebind controls and only giving me an option to quote unquote invert some mappings on the controller is what a developer does when they feel that they know better than the player how said player enjoys playing games. More on that later. Can't really give it one chair because you can in theory still play the game, so I can give it two. Yeah, that's two chairs for controls of next is fun. So, uh, assuming I don't vomit up my dinner, then did you have fun? Um, okay. You know, I, I don't know if things are going to change later in this game if I continue playing and give it a bit more love. But I'll tell you this, the first two boss fights, your first frog, then hippity hoppitus, they're exactly the same thing. You use your armadillo, you roll around, and you hit him with bombs from the front. It's like, how original is this bullshit? Uh, <laughs> and I, I do got to say this, because the first character you do learn is your spinny armadillo thingy. And if you're going to do a Sonic-like platformer, it damn well better handle like one. Mm. This doesn't. You know, I, I've put like 70 minutes into this game, so take everything I say with a grain of chainsaw, because... I made it to the kangaroo. You get the kangaroo. And I'm playing the first level with the kangaroo. Another Vin is back here, quietly whispering into my ear pussy. He's like, all right, now they're just fucking with you. Uh, <laughs> seriously. I, I mean, I understand how Armadillo McRoly face worked, kind of, sort of, even though he randomly would do stuff. And I was like, why the fuck are you doing that? How do I repeat that action? Then you throw this fucking kangaroo character at me. And I'm like, fuck this game. Eat a bag of dicks. Which is kind of disappointing because when, when I first launched this game and I looked at it and I went to the Steam store page and I'm looking through it and it's like, wow, you guys have spent tons of work. You've done a great job on this. How come this game's not blown up? And I played it and <laughs> that's where it kind of fell apart. I understand why this game never blew up. The control schemes on this game suck. They're miserable. They need to be fixed. I mean, tighten up the controls. That's all I can say, guys. Uh, I didn't hate the game, and I, I don't even like giving this score out because I can tell how much love and time and work went into this. This is not shovelware. This is the furthest thing from shovelware. But at the end of the day, if your product isn't really 
entertaining and play. I mean, it, it, I, there's so there's a good game buried in here, as I like to say, but it is buried under your bullshit control scheme that needs to be fixed. I'll give you two chairs. So a little a little behind the scenes uh, for uh, the review process of MechaZoo. Uh, we were actually supposed to do this last week with Empty. Uh, Empty had some technical issues, and therefore uh, we had to skip it. So uh, when that happened, I had, I had mentioned before, I would sliced up my thumb. So playing this game actually caused me physical pain and bleeding. <laughs> so I was... So, uh, I mean, I, I gave it another crack this week now that my finger has healed up and it doesn't hurt as much to use my thumb. Um, and so it didn't... It actually sort of worsened my opinion on it because uh, bef- beforehand I was thinking, well, you know what? Maybe maybe it's just the physical pain I'm in and the bleeding that is stopping this game from being fun. No, no. Um, the, the, contr- the controls are honestly the big thing that kills it because this game does a lot of things right. They have a suite of interesting characters. By, by definition, the gameplay will vary from se- level segment to level segment because you have to use different uh, animal, the different animal friends to solve different puzzles. I like that. I like the branching pathways. I like how uh, even in some levels, you can just choose your favorite way to go about a specific challenge and do it. And sometimes you'll get additional stuff for it. Sometimes you won't. It doesn't really matter. Um, but like the, the, the Rayman Sonic mashup could actually work if the controls just did what, made the characters do what I wanted them to do. Platformers live and die on them, as we've discussed many, mm-hmm. many times before on the chair position. And if you don't have solid controls that have clear action reactions, you're not going to have a good time. I have, I can only really give this two because there's, there's like Ben said, there's good elements to it. They just need to fix this one freaking problem. And then it could be a three chair game. Yeah, no, you can totally see, you know, the heritage behind this game it's like sonic and mega man had a baby and they left it in the care of aunt metroid and well if that description uh, doesn't tell you anything that's because you haven't been watching the chair acquisition long enough because everyone else knows exactly how i feel about platformers in this day and age uh the only thing that really saves mechazoo from a completely thorough beating with the mediocrity stick is that it doesn't you know, feature a hipster pixel aesthetic, as it were. Uh, I will even excuse the fact that all of the different skins, you know, except the kangaroo, can't really jump. Uh, the second one you get is a frog. Frogs, what do they do? How do they move around? They jump, unless they're in water, at which point they swim. But yeah, if they're in land, they jump. Outside of that teeny tiny little hop that that particular skin does in Mechazoo, it, it, it doesn't let you actually jump. But again, I will probably let that slide too. Uh, like, yeah, no, like Jordan already said, like, like many games before it, Mechazoo actually sacrifices tight controls and everything else for the sake of looking pretty. And while it does look and sound above the average piece of Unity Dross, which currently clogs up the the Steam store, the controls, you know, that one piece of essential video game componentry are floaty as fuck. And I know, gosh, but bear with me on this one. I don't really think I need to explain why controls are one of the most essential bits of a video game and having bad controls or unresponsive controls, as is the case, is a surefire way to get people like me to stop playing your game pretty goddamn fast. If the one mean of a fleshy human being interacting with the digital world you have created is fucked, most people won't be able to enjoy said world. And... And not even anywhere close to the way you'd like them to. And... That brings me back to the whole, if you're imposing a certain control scheme upon your players, that's just adding insult to injury. So no, I really did not have any fun with Mechazoo. One chair. All right. Well, that's one chair for the fun segment. We tally all this nonsense up. We might be able to squeeze this review in before the New Year's. That is two whole (laughs) chairs for Mechazoo. Quickly, final thoughts. Can we squeeze it in? Can we squeeze it out? Um, it's a game. It happens. Uh, currently, you were looking at. Come on, it's on sale nine ninety nine. Uh, no. If yeah, if and when they fix the controls and they get that sorted, uh, good on them. Make it happen. Then I can recommend it. In its current state, stay the fuck away. 
Yeah, I know. MechaZoo is just one of those games I really hate. Not because it's bad, but actually because it's not bad enough. I can respect a game being so bad it's actually impressive you can manage to play it at all. But MechaZoo, on the other hand, is a thoroughly mediocre game. It doesn't suck, but it's not good either, and that makes me sick. Motion sick, that is. Very, 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 very witty. Uh, yeah, no, like uh, like these guys said, this could be a really good game if they would fix the controls, and maybe they will because you can patch games. So devs, please take that to heart. And, you know, if if you're into that stuff, or maybe maybe you want to try it for yourself, the game's on sale for nine bucks now, so pick it up, maybe. That's what the not sure if want thing is for. So closing out 2016 with not so much of a bang but a whimper, that is the last chair quiz this year. <laughs>